And I suppose where I think it, there was quite a bit of dialogue back and forth. There was a good discussion, not just among the panelists, but among everybody participating in the conference. And I suppose where things probably came out was like this. That first of all, people do see that over the next 10 to 15 years, there are some signs that on the horizon, we're entering a more risky period as far as the risks of a debt, uh, the necessity of a debt restructuring. There are a lot of countries with relatively high debt, relatively weak fiscal positions. We're looking at a period of relatively slow growth in the global economy in all likelihood. And a, 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 a trend toward population aging in especially the advanced countries, that means that growth is probably, that's also going to be a, a factor slowing down growth. So put all of that together, and I think there's reason to believe that the risks of more sovereign debt problems in the future is somewhat greater than it's been for the last decade. I think there was probably a fair amount of agreement on that. I think there was also an agreement that the institutions that we have could be better. It's not that they are horribly deficient, but they do lead to delays in decisions on restructuring, and there are still problems with coordinating the actions of creditors of sovereign debtors uh, so that the, the restructuring is both fair and uh, done very smoothly. So I think there was a, a general feeling that, that that process could be made better. I think even more than the, the actual legal procedures, there was a sense that there could be a better and more objective analysis of the situation that a country that has a sovereign debt problem is in. Is this actually a problem where the country needs to have a loan to get it over a period of illiquidity? Or is it, is it a country that is facing a real insolvency problem? It simply will not ever be able to pay back its debt with kind of normal assumptions about how much it can tax and how much it has to spend. So I think there was that element of it too, that there, the, the analysis uh, could be placed in a more objective setting. But finally, I think there was also a feeling that there is not a big constituency for this, uh, for changes in the institutions in uh, the direction that most people would say they needed to go, uh, that this has been an issue that has been largely moribund for the last 10 years uh, since a, a previous initiative to try to improve the restructuring mechanism was dropped about a decade ago. So building the constituency for that change, which would be very beneficial, is going to take a lot of work and a lot more effort to get these issues on the table. Uh, in some sense fooled themselves uh, when they uh, created uh, the monetary union because they thought, and this is my own view, okay, and most of them won't agree with me, they suspended gravity. They thought that they could create a monetary union without a fiscal union because they didn't want to give up sovereignty. Okay, and they thought that by just, you know, having everybody sign on to the Maastricht criterion and the, and the, st and the stability and growth pact, that everybody would follow the rules, okay, and they wouldn't, and they wouldn't ex you know, go into excessive debt, okay. And, and, and so it was assumed that everybody would follow the rules and, you know, everything would be fine. They would do stru what's called structural adjustment. Uh, they'd improve their labor markets, and they'd try to make it a real monetary union without having the fiscal trappings. And they would do something which has never been done before. Okay, and what's, what we found in this crisis, the crisis, the recession, and now the debt crisis, I mean the financial crisis, recession, and debt crisis, is that, you know, when you drop an apple from, you know, five feet, it's going to fall. It's not going to stay there. And so the Europeans are finding out how the law of gravity's work, gravity works. Uh, I mean, very simple. And I think that they have to go in the direction of the, the, the successful fiscal unions. They have to have a no, an effective, credible no bailout mechanism. And they have to have some federal or central European euro area fiscal authority, which has taxing power, that doesn't have to go through the members, and has the ability to create this bond that can fund some, 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 some basic functions, including the ability to, to, to have transfers between member countries when they get into trouble. Look, there's no question that the, the 
global financial system is, is just becoming not only larger but more interconnected and that means the international aspects of this are very important. Uh, it's a particular problem with respect to how you manage problems at individual large financial institutions that are global. That's a particular cross-border problem that we need to make more progress on. Um, but I think there's no question that those interlinkages mean that these are international issues that kind of have to be dealt with at the global level. You can't, the notion that you can manage these problems at a national level is just, I think, increasingly unviable. And that, that highlights the importance of, of the role of things like the fund and, and other international organizations. So the Europeans should be, should, if they think like that, okay, and they have this, this, this feeling of responsibility, they could create a mechanism to deal with countries that get into trouble, that get into trouble for reasons not of their own making. So that's why I think Portugal, Portugal is different from Greece. Greece got into trouble because they lied, they followed an incredibly um, um, corrupt fiscal policy, okay, and, th and, that, and they got away with it. The Portuguese didn't do that. The Portuguese, is, Portugal is a small, relatively underdeveloped country. It got hit by the crisis. It hasn't developed, um, it, it, really, it really is not competitive. It doesn't have anything to sell to the rest of the world. So they're like a developing, a developing province. They're in Newfoundland. So we should be, the, the Europeans should be transferring resources to them and doing whatever they can to let that country grow up and not kicking them out. Uh, because we, uh, uh, because we, 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 we need to make sure that we don't forget the lessons of the past. And there's a, um, uh, you might say, a community of, of practitioners, uh, policy people, and scholars who are very knowledgeable about the histories of all of these various debt crises and who uh, need to get together to try to challenge their ideas in view of the latest crises and to see if in fact uh, they can add anything to the collective wisdom of, of in, the, in the global community. And this conference serves a very useful purpose in taking stock uh, of the status of, of of proposed solutions to uh, sovereign debt crises in light of what's happening in the Eurozone and the recent decisions in Greece. So it's, it's really very useful to, to bring all of these people together. Um, if you say what is the concrete value added, very hard to say. It's very hard to say because in the end, going back to your first question, politicians in, will have to make decisions. And politicians, uh, there are two problems there. One is politicians change so that the, the new politicians will not necessarily want to take responsibility for problems that were not their creation. Um, and the will, would be reluctant to do so unless they really had to. Um, and also because politicians are thinking of elections, uh, they may not necessarily trust the advice that comes out of conferences like this that would seem to propose a more of a institutionalized framework for resolving these crises and to minimize the cost really for the population of the debtor countries and to be fair to the creditors. But uh, whether in fact these conclusions can get translated into policy terms uh, I'd like to be optimistic, but I, I think that I would uh, reserve judgment on that.